Hello guys, we're back on another adventure and today we have some interesting people that we're going to interview and uh, I guarantee you we've got some stories that will make your hair stand up. We've got some stories that will amaze you and shock you. And you know what it is man, it's Cross These Adventures. How's it going my peeps? What's going on? How's your day doing? What productive shit have you been doing? I hope you're all well. I hope you I hope you getting your dreams, fucking manifesting them and and all that business, you know? Um all right, first order of business, okay? Um listen. Uh I think everyone's kind of established this this uh this path that they kind of planned out, right? This blueprint, which is amazing, right? But it doesn't matter how big, big of, bigger moves you think that they are, still put them down, bro. Because I mean, the possibilities in this world are endless, and the idea that we can't succeed is bullshit, right? Because I feel as if the more movement you create traction, and even if it doesn't go your way, you can't say that that you didn't, you didn't at least give it a go, you know. And that's the whole point, right? So the idea is uh, go out there, okay? Go out there, talk to some people, make some contacts, hand out some resumes, get some numbers, give a number, you know, just fucking do what you gotta do, right? And eventually something's gonna come to you. I guarantee you that. And uh, I hope, I hope, I just hope all of you guys are doing like tremendously well in whatever field you choose to do. And I hope that your remaining fucking um, comfortable in uncomfortable situations and you're pushing yourself to that limit where you can grow and become stronger okay so let's keep kicking it man and uh let's see what comes up next how's it going i'm alex what's your name mooney mooney okay mooney tell me um a story well i'm an international student I, uh, I have been living in Australia not too long, but I got to know so many people and I got to so many experiences. I had so many experiences to be honest. And it's something great to to really have, you know? Yes. yes. So uh, what I'm saying is it's really a great idea to just explore other countries and other cultures uh, with different vibes, different people, different mentalities, different everything. So uh, at the beginning it was kind of strange for me to get along with some like foreigners, international people, but then I really loved it because it's uh, an opportunity and everyone has to take it. There's only one chance uh, that, he, that you can take it, you know what I mean? So uh, yes, yes. the opportunity is only comes once, if you didn't take it you will lose it, it will never come back. So yeah, like that's all I can say. Carpe diem, be, be present and mindful of the present. Exactly, yes. yeah, true. Yes. So, so, so tell me, what, what is the wisdom that you've learned from, from knowing all these different people? I honestly don't have uh, wisdom, but from what I, what I have learned from uh, this kind of experience is that just live your life, be happy and don't worry about anything and just live your life and uh, experience every single thing that you can uh, like experience. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, this is uh, my message to everyone, just uh, live your life and uh, that's it. Is there any, is there any take you want to you give to the people? Like is there potentially like... Uh, I really don't have anything at the top of my mind, but all I can say is live your life, live your life. Okay. and be happy. It's nice when you. I'm alright. I'm alright, Alex. How are you? What's uh, What's your name? I'm Sasha. Alright, Sasha. I live in St Kilda. Ask me some questions. Um, tell us a story. My story is I grew up um, in St Kilda my whole life. I grew up with a single mom. She's my rock. I love her. 
I um, find drum circles to be a really great expressive um, interest of mine to really help me um, feel at one with, with the ocean and with, with St Kilda. I love how it brings so many people together, um, 80 year olds and 5 year olds all in one, one place. Yeah, um, other than that, um, we'll have individual stories we need, we need to... This is the freshest dude ever! Um, we need to share and that um, everyone's story is unique and genuine and um, I, I thank you for being on this interview. So, so uh, tell, us, tell us your story, man. What's, what's, uh, what's it like growing up in St Kilda? Uh, I feel like I grew up in a very expressive um, suburb um, with lots of different people. I felt um, my personality, especially, I was able to express myself without um, prejudice compared to some other suburbs. Um, and I'm surrounded with, very fortunately, some friends who can let me be me um, as a young age, like um, divine feminine, divine masculine in one. Um, other than that, I grew up um, at school at St. Kilda Park Primary, went to St. Michael's, left St. Michael's because um, private schools are not some place I can express myself correctly. I then moved to um, Swinburne Secondary College, which is there, just a normal public school. Um, I love that much more. Um, yeah, other than that, I... Um, yeah, I, just, I, love, I love living at the moment. I really love life. Even during Corona, I'm having a good time. So, wait, so what's what's the wisdom that you've learned from, from all of this experience, man? Um, through life that I, um, through dystopia there's utopia, through hardship there's um, thriving, um, that I feel like I can um, love my friends and know what they've been through, not through a 95 ATAR, but through um, wisdom, and wisdom is not intelligence, there's, there's no, um, nothing in a textbook can teach you how to, how to be a good person. And uh, I, I learned that at a very young age. Um, as I, I get very low scores in school. Um, well, I mean, like Einstein said it best: you can't judge a fish in its ability to ride a bike the same as its ability to f swim. You know what I mean? So yes, um, dolphins are really smart in the ocean, and they'll be placed on it on um, on sand. They wouldn't be able to walk, and we're not very good swimmers. Yeah. And we're all intelligent in different ways, for sure. So I mean, it's it's all it's all learning just different kind of things. Wisdom can't be taught in, t in a textbook, it has to be learned. So wisdom has to be experienced and yes. not taught? Yes. Okay. Do you believe that there's universal truth in wisdom or universal truth to yourself and your own wisdom? Um, there's not universal truth to wisdom. It's all a subjective experience. Um, we all experience wisdom in different ways and we collect um, identity through that in different ways. So like, we, we might learn something and we gain a, an experience from it and then we, we, that is, is with us um, into the future. Um, and yeah, everyone's different, everyone learns different things from different scenarios. So what is, what is your idea of, of identity? When we're talking about identity, what is your idea of identity? Um, well, there's many different theories. I'm more with the whole bundle, bundle theory idea that it's um, a collective subjective experience, uh, as I was just saying. Um, other philosophers believe on, I don't really believe, um, identity is equated to consciousness, so memory. Um, and some are about mind and body. I think it's all a bit of an illusion. I think it's a bit of a rose covered glasses. I think that's a way to put it. Like a, a, a mask, a smoked mirror. Like we don't have an identity. I feel, I feel like our identity is usually governed by not only what our parents teach you, but the people that you surround yourself with is who you're going to potentially become. The whole idea of nature versus nurture? Yes. Mm. So what's your theories on that? Do you feel like... You nurture all the way, baby. Nurture all the way? Yeah. Alright, do you want a caption to go out with? I'm winning through Corona. Awesome, awesome. in a very nice lookout, etc. And me with another friend, we decided to try mushrooms for the first time. And I was just looking at this guy, just chilling, etc. Not really noticing any effects, till I felt this notion of peace, like complete peace and complete happiness. I think I just could lie down on the floor and feel absolutely amazing. Not energetic, not tired, just amazing. I would stand Peace, I love
it. When, when I was on mushrooms, I realized that a lot of subconscious suppressed stuff came up. So, did you kind of go through that same sort of experience? Kind of. I had like a little bit of flashbacks on my memory of very important memories before, good and bad. And they made me realize how I felt towards those people that we were meeting in those moments. Like, it made me reflect a lot my, about my attitude towards other people. Okay, so, so uh, is there any wisdom that you've learned from the, the, the magic mushroom experience? Uh, just to be ki- always be kind to others and it will go back to you. Like always try to reach this state of being calm and being at peace and you will be happy. Things eventually will get better. I love that. I love that. Is there anything else that you want to add? Like uh, any piece of wisdom, any catchphrase or whatever you want? Well, at this time that everything is difficult for everyone, just be kind to the person that's next to you and they will be kind back to you. We all need it back now. Yeah, the, the art of, the art of uh, what is it? Um, like attracts like, right? Yeah, so exactly. whatever you put out, it's, you're going to get back in return. Exactly. So. That can go to everyone now on these difficult times. Yes. Thank you very much. It was nice to meet you. I smell hair. I'm trying to throw the fire again. I really want to throw the fire. Hey man, um, I'm Alex. Tell us your name. Uh, I'm Kai. Nice to meet you, bro. Hey, um, tell us a story about whatever you want, bro. So, the story about me is I, I'm a drummer, singer, and uh, I make my own music pretty much. And uh, it's a dream come true, bro. You know, it's always been, it's always been my, my thing of uh, making music, making people like enjoy it and dance up and down, bro. You know. So what? What is? What, um, a lot of people say that drummers are like angry. Do you think like you kind of express your anger through the drums? No man, like for um, for drumming, you know, drumming it, it, it's never about anger. Drumming is always like it, it makes you like feel happy and, and and relax. And when you hear the music, you just want to dance to it. You know, it's never it's, it's never about, 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 about anger or whatever. You know, it's all, it's all about it's all about enjoying it, relaxing, the music. It's all about. I feel I feel like it's like. You know, usually like when people use instruments and they use it as a way to kind of like meditate. So do you feel like the drums are the same thing? Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. So, uh, so tell us a piece of wisdom. Like just about anything, bro. Piece of wisdom. Well, I, I just I, I, like I see someone enjoying his his peace and quiet. I just feel, I just I just I appreciate that. I love I love people who are always calm and just happy about about their life and just giving so much love to other people and respect. You know, it's the one thing I, I appreciate because I I also I also love giving wisdom to other people and I share my heart with, with, with everyone else and it's all about for me, man. You know, it's always good. Yeah, so so do you do you feel like uh, that's what we're here to do? Is always trying to help people. People try to help us. Always. Along that road, bro. Yeah, it's always about like just enjoying, enjoying yourself and just believing, you know, and believing on who you are. You know, it's always those inside you, always have your heart with you, your man, your soul, your bravery. So would you say that mindfulness in terms of exercise is very, very good in terms of being aware, yeah. just being in your environment? Absolutely. It's always, it's always good to have your, your great, your great environment and your, and your passion every time. Every time. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's great. I, f- I feel like there's a lot of passion when it comes to drumming, man. Much love. And uh, do you want anything to go out with, bro? Uh, I just want to like remember. I just want to remember all, all this, all this fun time that's been happening around here, bro. And it's always, it's always, always going to be in my head, in my heart. And I'm going to give it all to the people. Uh, it's one thing about me. Much love, bro. Much love. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh,
York, I lay them. Tell us a story. Tell you a story. About whatever you want, bro. A lot of people have very similar problems to each other. No matter whether they're poor, no matter whether they're rich. It's just... Passed down through the generations, these problems. But they stop with us. This is the generation where those problems stop. So it's essentially, is, is what you're saying, like uh, some pro some traits and and genetics are transferred through like your ancestors, yeah. So potentially you could live a similar life to them. Is that what you're saying? Somewhat. It's more like family values okay. get passed down, whether you like it or not, because that's the natural way of things. Naturally, we sort of act the same way as our parents do, whether we like it or not. Yeah, yeah. They're just a fair bit older than us. But, I mean, a little bit of the basics of psychology here. There's a thing called parent ego, child ego, and adult ego. Parent ego and the child ego are very natural states to be in. They're very emotionally charged. Yeah, yeah. And they conflict with each other a lot. No one likes being treated like a child. But that's what the parent ego does. It goes, oh, I'm so worried for you. You're going to hurt yourself. Don't take that risk. And the child ego goes, ah, I want to be free. I want to do stuff. Why am I here? But then you've got the adult ego, which can listen to those two and go, I hear you, parent ego. I hear your concerns for this person. And you've got the child one, which goes, I hear you wanting to be free, but you express it in a cool, calm, collective manner with logic and reason and acceptance of the fact that they have their life, you have that yours, and you don't need to be emotionally intertwined with each other. You can be separate, but still interact respectfully. Yes. So uh, that was very intriguing. Like I, I like your whole idea about it in terms of doubt and, and fear can be seen as a parent and child construct in terms of the mind. I like that idea. It's not my idea, to be honest. I was taught it by an addictions counselor. Okay. So, so tell us a story about uh, addiction. What do you think about addiction? Depends on the environment the person's put into. So do you feel it's, like people kind of react to the environment that they're into, or do you think like potentially like we are all habits of addiction, but we are a self-destructive kind of like species? I mean, I can be addicted to exercise, but it's addiction is where we have no boundaries of where we go. This is hurting me and I need to stop it. It's where we go, I'm just gonna keep doing this thing, I'm not gonna think about the consequences. Like, people, I have a friend, he's addicted to running. He ran until both his legs, legs were injured. But then he kept going, because he was like, I wouldn't need that high, I need that high, I need those endorphins. So it's not even drugs, it's running. But what? if he had boundaries of going, shit, both my legs are broken, I need to go see a physio, I need to see a GP. Then it's no longer addiction, it's making a logical, informed decision. I, I, I feel what you're saying, I feel what you're saying. Like, uh, I think the whole idea is escapism, right? Because many people kind of get trapped in this idea, you know, like, that that is the way to live. They want to get you know? away from reality. Yeah, everyone does, man. So I like this whole idea of like even running and stuff like that, you're getting outside your body, you know, because you're focusing on your body, not your head. Usually when you're exercising, right? So I mean, you can get to a runner's high. That's where... what the runner's high is. I think it's like the endorphin rush that you're moving your body in a certain way, but I also think it's because you're focusing on your body and not what's in your head, but in the moment. You know what I mean? You're being somewhat mindful. Well, yeah. Ultimately, whatever's going up in our head will come back to us yeah but, but people don't give it space through the day they busy themselves they get busy 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 and then at night time when there's nothing going on it all just comes down because they left no space for it during the day they didn't meditate they didn't just do a bit of mindful activity they didn't consult what was going on in their minds so it comes back in the silent mind at night time and they go i don't want to remember that time where i embarrassed myself five years ago <laughs> It's not a good time to remember. So tell us, tell us uh, 
tell us a piece of wisdom in terms of maybe like a, a routine for someone who is maybe struggling out there. For sure. Um, I've gone through major depressive disorder, anxiety, suicide, chronic pain, which I still have, which I'm fixing. I've gone through a lot of them. Um, for the major depressive disorder, I felt super isolated in the world. Even when I go out partying, still feel isolated. Contact my friends, still feel isolated. Because I wasn't in touch with myself. And ultimately I've learned, at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my emotions. I can't put them on my friends to take responsibility for them. And I've done that by going out and reaching out to counselling, like Headspace. And they've been extremely useful in helping guide me into healthy habits. They're not judgmental. They go, yeah, accept the fact, hey, you watch porn, you do drugs, okay, that's fine, we're not going to change that, we're going to keep you as you are, but what do you want to work on, what do you want to make better in your life? A lot of people are just happy being like, yeah, there's a lot of shit, I just live with it, but not me, I go, I don't want that shit in my life, I want it out of here, and I've done that through, these days, it's exercise, Sleeping well, eating well, vegetarian diet, that sort of thing. How are you, brother? Now you're mixing. Now you're mixing. Do you hug too, bro, or what? Nah, I don't love you, man. You love me. You know you do. How you doing, bro? Hey, what's now? I'm drunk. Why you? Oh, get in the bed. I'm Alex, brother. So, so, so just don't ever look at the camera, Baba. So, so, uh, shall we continue? Yeah, we can. Yes. Okay. Okay, so. Words of advice? You got any words of advice? Um, hi, say, until the color of a man's eyes is no more important than the color of his skin. How do you ask? Whoa! Robin is the Mali, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love you, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, bro. I'll buy this, Gente Rabbi. Rastafarian. Hey, Venus. <laughs> Tell us a story about whatever you want. So the story can be about the time you got shoes, the story could be about how you got here, the story could be about growing up as a woman, whatever story you want, and then a piece of wisdom to go along with that. Did you say about shoes? About whatever you want. I remember this amazing pair of boots that I found in an op shop. And that um, that day that I got them in the op shop, I rocked up to this party that night and I opened the door and this guy was like, oh, Eddie, those are like this girl Mary's shoes. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, oh, this girl Mary like paints those shoes and resells them. And she was um, like this older indigenous woman. And um, he was like, oh, she's actually out the back now. So I went out the back of this house and got to talk to this artist who had painted my shoes, which was like really incredible. Um, they're very special to me. And I think I was just kind of blown away that I like something as simple as like an item could have so much like uh, significant, value. Si- significant value behind it and that it could be passed through people and it had like a real kind of uh, obviously this pair of shoes had a massive journey behind it and it wasn't like because it wasn't just me that had had them before obviously there's other people that have worn them and I was just like hey that's really cool like, so it's, that's- it's somewhat spiritual in that things yeah yeah, and I, was, I don't know. I think whenever I really respect items a lot more now, with like 
I don't just like the things that I have are very like significant to me and I, I think a lot about um yeah I don't know I feel like that's you feel like you feel like there's a lot to go with the shoes in terms of like <laughs> spiritual significance yeah and everything for that matter like I just every so, what, so what's a piece of wisdom that you kind of learned in your life about spirituality uh, oh my goodness that's such a broad question oh, okay okay what's a piece of wisdom yeah. that you've learned about meeting people about meeting people yes to not judge someone by their cover at all okay. or or to not have any expectations of people. Um, I feel like once I let go of expectations, I found it a lot easier to uh, connect with people. I feel the same thing, but about assumptions. Yeah. You know, and I feel that comes with the first thing that you said about not judging someone by their color. Yeah. But I, I feel like because we go through experiences in life, we tend to stereotype certain people because of yeah. the whole idea that it protects us in the future. Yeah, exactly. So, I feel, but I feel like that's not that's natural. Like it's just it's just what we naturally do to yeah protect us or or to put up those barriers. But it's just really really important to like try and be as open as possible because you you, do, you don't know what walks of life people have gone down or who the person actually is. When yeah, I mean, the whole point of meeting someone, right, is is to kind of, like, relate to them on a fundamental level, whether it's just being human or whether it's an experience, right? But that's pretty much how we bond with people, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I feel like the whole idea is to be somewhat vulnerable because meeting people is awkward as fuck. Just like me meeting you, it's been awkward as fuck, but I've enjoyed it. <laughs> and you I, mean awkward as fuck? I feel awkward as fuck because I'm just an awkward person. Oh, okay. But, I like this that you're doing. This but yeah, the I whole point of me awkward. saying that, yeah. like, you feel vulnerable right now because you're telling a story. I feel vulnerable because I'm, I'm admitting that I feel fucking awkward. <laughs> but, you know, I feel like that's the whole point, right? Yeah, yeah. And I am glad I got to interview you and thank you for the wisdom. Thank you. <laughs> What's going on, mate? Hey. Say, so, Kilda's, um, like, full of magic it's tricks. Magic. Yeah. When people talk to things or um, magical moments that act like it's real, there's only truly one atom here. It's away from the recognition of time and memorial, like the primeval Lord um, Sri Radhe Krishna Ram Mananda. Oi, 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 Aussie, 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 flat, uh, jacks, flat, facts, that fiction or um, turmoil. My soul is written, St. Kilda rules, angel boy. Uh, St. Kilda is um, within Victoria, Melbourne, Melbourne, Victoria. It's um, actually a god state now. Um, China can go talk to uh, Taipei while I do Wushu Double Dragon style on their forehead. Okay, tell us the story, bro. Well, basically, it's, um, we've gone through a long time of Anzac um, qualities, but it's been mistreatment from the day the treaty didn't get um, signed. So treaty, yeah, done. Okay, tell us a piece of wisdom, bro. The piece of wisdom is um, Dome of the Wise gets the uh, promised land when the virtue is the sound of the sweet. Silence is the uh, vicinity of the one that doesn't close their eyes. Blink. Okay. Hey guys, I, uh, I just wanted to do like a, a little segment. I have another topic and the topic is escapism. And I feel like in this modern age, this is probably like the most prominent thing, right? I mean, I think it's like for the the definition of escapism, what it means is like either taking a substance or like, you know, do, watching, you know, media, social media, all that shit. It's a form of escapism, right? Imagination. So I feel like everybody kind of needs it. But it's an addiction nonetheless with everything else, right? So, I mean, for me, sometimes when I smoke smoke some weed, I'm kind of like off of my own world. And even when I'm sober, all I'm doing is watching a lot of fucking, you know, I'll watch a lot of movies or I'll listen to a lot of podcasts. And the problem with this is, you know, is like, you're learning and everything like that. But, I mean, like, 
potentially like I feel like you have to be aware and be present and be mindful and these things are very 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 good so when you're doing stuff of escapism also be mindful and present of what you're doing because I mean like that's the trap right and that's how the addiction kind of goes so I think make time limits you know make time limits for how long you can watch this TV show or how long you're gonna be on fucking social media or how long you're gonna be on lives or whatever the fuck you do in terms of you know your um, your escapism right so potentially I think the best thing yeah is just to prioritize it man because you don't want to get stuck stuck in ruts like we all do right so I think this just comes along with balance as well you know balance pro productivity with mindless bullshit to kind of fill the time up you know and this just basically means like yes we're not all switched on all the time but you know the idea is to be more you know engaging and kind of just like breathing and embracing you know that's a uh, that's another note too right so I feel I feel like because uh, I've been doing these lives a lot lately right so I feel like I meet all these people and shit and it's cool you know you get to meet all these people but like you get addicted to that man like sit there just on your phone you can talk to anyone at any time you know like and if you're if you want to be a social person that's kind of like the best way to do it in terms of you know dealing with rejection and shit like that you know because that's that's pretty much what's prominent in everyone's life and the more that you socialize the more you realize that it doesn't matter you just be your authentic self and you have to work out whether you like them not whether they like you but the problem is it's always like we're people pleasers right we always want the best especially if you're a nurturer man and you're an empathetic person that's that's what happens you know but again this all comes from balance man i'm kind of taking note in that so yeah and and i reckon if you do do escapism and shit like that so like video games or like media or like really anything like that make sure it's like um it's always changing and it's always evolving so you're always learning something new you feel what i mean so like something like call of duty would boost your reflexes with your sight and shit right and say for example you know like uh if you watch a movie watch a movie about whatever fuck you want because that's what you do when you're bored no i don't know anyway anyway uh i'll get back to you guys we are back and uh i got i got something to tell you there's uh there's a lot of new beginnings happening in the next few days um my roommates are moving out i'm getting my leg surgery that i've been waiting for for months and i feel like things are coming together you know and you know there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, things that that keep coming up since I've been on this journey, right? And when I say journey, I mean obviously I'm talking about the whole no flap and morning routines and shit like that. So for the past two weeks or past week, I've been fucking steady, bro. You know, I haven't like I've edged, but I haven't relapsed you know and i guess that depends on what you perceive as a relapse you know um because i've had my triggers man and i've been close but i haven't so i kind of find that an achievement in itself um another thing that i've noticed is that and this could be contributed to the weed that i've been smoking or potentially the whole no flap thing but 
I feel like my, my stress levels and my fucking depression is going super high. But I'm kind of conquering that because I keep shifting my focus onto things that I know that I can control, you know? And not kind of letting emotions overtake my actions. And I feel like, for me, that's one of the biggest things in my life, is not letting my emotions take over my actions, man. And I feel like this whole stoic approach with life kind of pushes you in that direction. So, I mean, you got to just accept it is what it is and keep moving. Keep moving forward, man. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll reach the peak of success of where I'm leading and that's where I'm going to get, you know? Like, um, it's my weak chip or whatever, you know, if we're doing that AA thing and it might not seem much, but I feel like it's doing like a dramatic effect in terms of just me being aware of what I'm doing in the present moment. You know, like, I've been, I was talking about escapism before, and I feel like that's another form of escapism, you know? And, uh, yeah, I feel like uh, there's a lot of energy in the air, and most, most of it's really good energy, you know? So, I guess I gotta just keep focusing on what I'm putting out and what I'm putting into myself, that way I can radiate it, you know? So, yeah, I guess uh, things are a bit rocky, but I'm fucking kicking ass, bro. And that's the thing, you know? Like, I, I, uh, I believe that anyone can do this, right? Whether you're a man or a woman or fucking trans or whatever the fuck you decide to do, you know what I mean? Um, you can do it. It's all about willpower, and I feel like... A lot of people lack it these days, you know? Especially with this world of convenience. I mean, everything is so convenient these days. So, that's beautiful, but there's a dark side to convenience. You know what I mean? Like, the good side to convenience is that you can have food at your door at any point of the day, all right? Dark side of convenience, you don't know how to cook fucking food, and you don't know where it comes from. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, there's flip sides to everything, right? And I feel like that just goes along with the process, you know? So the flip side to this whole journey thing is like, ah, uh, I've, I've been suppressing my reward system in, hope, in hopes for a bigger reward, you know? And I feel like that's the main goal, right? And... I do believe, I do believe it's going to be amazing. But at this point, I don't know. I, f I feel like everyone gets fucking skeptic, right? So I think the, 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 main, the main point that I'm trying to make is just keep faith, keep fucking consistency, man, and keep running with it, you know? And eventually, all this shit's going to bloom in your favor. So... Uh, till I'm looking at ya. I, uh, I came across this, uh, this thing the other day and I was, I thought it was fascinating. There was these two people talking about how, like, uh, the two things that men and women need out of a relationship. So, a man needs to feel needed and a woman needs to feel desired, right? Or, and... She doesn't want to be your everything. She wants to be appreciated and in your life, but not the plateau that centers your happiness. Okay? So, most women want a guy that every girl wants, but doesn't want a guy who's after every girl. You feel me? Okay, so it gives that aspect of feeling special, you know, because women like, you know, someone who's similar to them, right? So most women are uh, desired by many men, but only choose one, right? So this is the same thing, right? The same deal. And she'll put you through a series of tests, and most women have the same test that they put their man through to see if he's eligible 
you know as a mate so just remember keep that keep that in in notice man because she might she might put these little tests on you and it's her way to kind of reassure herself that she's getting into a secure somewhat relationship with you okay I want to talk about toxic masculinity so yeah I kind of have like a vague description of what toxic masculinity is and my description of from what I've heard from you know the feminist shit is the basis where there's a patriarchy and the plight of man is aggressive and controlling right and I agree somewhat but I understand it, right? Because with with love and um, I can say with love and hate, it's in the same region of the brain, right? So tension is in you know attraction. So you know I think the basis of men being you know testosterone and have more aggression because they have to be dominant right and that's the fucking tension that you feel right on top of that I feel as if like uh, the idea of what masculinity is meant to mean is that you you are a rock okay you do not let feelings get in the way of logic and that's 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 what it is that's what your job is right you have to always be on your fucking game and see this is this is what i think the the main problem is when it comes to you know this whole thing about um suicide and shit like that because most men feel like they can't express themselves especially to their fucking partner you know about whatever's going on in their fucking life because of fear of being judged the fear of being seen as weak See, when guys express emotions, that means like he, he cares about you. You mean something to him. You know what I mean? Because he knows that if he expresses emotions to the wrong girl, he's seen as dismissive. And, you know, she doesn't like that because she feels as if she can't let her emotions go and have a rock there. You feel me? Because she feels comfort in someone who has control over their emotions. Where is if you don't have control over your emotions, she feels like she can't let loose of her emotions. You feel me? And I feel like that kind of coincides with this whole idea of toxic masculinity. You know, because women talk about it like it's the worst thing in the world, but yet it's the one thing that they find attractive about us. Besides money and all the other fucking bullshit you have to fucking provide just to feel loved, man. It's like, I'm, I'm not being bitter, but like, the idea of unconditional love only comes from parents, man, and fucking animals. It doesn't happen in relationships, bro. You know what I mean? Like, eventually that shit fades because you're not fucking keeping the spark up. You know what I mean? Like, you always got to be on your toes. You always got to be on your game. Because, lads, if you're not on your fucking game, she's going to fuck the next guy. I guarantee you, bro. And I'm not saying that because I fucking hate women. I'm saying that because it's fucking real, cunt. Right? Women complain when men do it all the fucking time. But they're just as fucking bad, man. In fact, they're even worse. You know why? Because they get ten times more attention than us. Ten times. Okay? So that means for every five girls that you get a number, she gets fucking 20 dick pics. Plus. And that depends whether she's a high class girl or not right so it's one of those things and you know what we always want to date up okay that's that's the thing but dating up for women and dating up for men is two completely different things right dating up for a woman is a man who is strong and has money and these are just stereotypical stuff but also I feel like the complete package for a woman would be a man who's a provider but also like 
a dominant alpha in terms of being her rock emotionally. Whereas, you know, the opposite, the ass is like, okay, well she's a nice piece of ass, and if she listens to what I fucking say, then I'm gonna feel like she loves me, you know what I mean? And that's where the nurturing side comes, and this is the reason why we like feminine women, man, because they make us feel fucking appreciated. And all women want in this fucking world is to feel appreciated and have your fucking attention, but not like be the center of attention all the fucking time. You know what I mean? There's a reason why we need space, and there's a reason why you need to give your woman space too. They're not your whole fucking life, bro. They're just an aspect. They add on to your life, bro. And that's, that's, I don't know, that's my view on toxic masculinity, you know? Like, I feel like it's a, it's a part of, of, of dating and everything that, when you think about it, everything comes down to, to sex and power, you know? And I don't think that's a, a man thing, man. I think that's just an animal thing. There's a hierarchy, man. The hierarchy comes with all this survival of the fittest shit because you got to do what you got to do, okay? And no one gives a shit about you, bro. Not even your family, okay? They may give a shit about you a little bit, but not in the way that you give a shit about yourself, okay? So here's, here's my take on everything, okay? Have self-respect for yourself, okay? Don't get too invested in shit that does not apply to you. And remember, stay strong when shit has pressure all around you. You know what I mean? And when she adds pressure on you, be that fucking rock. And I guarantee you, she'll buckle and she'll become submissive. Because what she's trying to do, she's trying to evoke emotion, right? Because that's the way she kind of connects with people because she's a woman. Because that's how they connect, right? But she can't find you sexually attractive if you're, you know, being on that emotional level. You feel me? Because it's not, love isn't about that, at least in a heterosexual way. And this may be just like the whole red pill idealistic, but it's fucking real, bro. You know, and, you know, just, uh, here's another note to remember. There's a narrative, right? There's a narrative that you tell yourself. So if you believe something, then it forms your whole idealistic version of yourself and adds onto your personality. So, there, you know, listen to the knowledge, whether it applies to you or doesn't apply to you, I couldn't give a fuck. I'm just kind of spreading my own kind of truth and uh, the shit that I've learned. So, peace. This here. Some lazy motherfucker decided to put a footrest on this thing. Uh, oh, you know what? It's the beauties of Melbourne. Hey guys, um, we're back. And uh, I just wanted to, to give a little, um, I don't know, a little insight on my day today, okay? Now I've been waiting for this surgery for the last fucking seven or eight months. And I got excited last night, had a few beers, and then they tell me, you know what? Surgery can't happen because potentially the anesthesia could, you know, react badly because you, you've had alcohol in your system. Which, I understand that. And it's getting to the point that I'm, I'm uh, you know, basically trying to say that there's delays on the journey of what you want, right? You can either sit and mope about shit or you can adapt and kind of do something else that, you know, puts into things other perspectives, you know, like, say for example, man, you may not have the job that you want, but you can study, you know what I mean? You may not, uh, you may not be the fittest person in the world, but you can do breathing exercises, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's always ways to achieve a similar goal to what you, that you want to achieve. So just keep pushing, man. And I guarantee you things will fall into place when they're meant to.
even when there's delays, man, it's just that much more better when you do fucking finally get what you want. So. Guys, um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to this company, bro. I've been like really, really getting into them and this isn't a paid sponsorship or anything, but um, I just wanted to give a shout out because I think it's a great company and they do have quality items. So this is something for your supplement stack. Call it Lion's Mane. Okay, this is a mushroom that helps with mum memory and focus. And uh, you take it with any drink, it's probably best to take it with coffee because you know that's what we do to wake ourselves up and to focus. So um, that's uh, that's my tip. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are having a good day. And I'll catch you uh, when we get back into it.